Hello, hello out there, everybody. Jim Cummings here. Now, I know what you're thinking. When is D. Bradley Baker going to be on the podcast? Good news, ladies and gentlemen, presenting none other, the myth, the man, the legend, D. Bradley Baker. I'm here now. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Have you met Brendan from Down Under? I, I did 15 seconds ago. Hello again. Okay. It's lovely to meet you, Dave. Great to meet you. Where, where's my, where do I look? Do I look at... Brendan on the laptop, or do I look up here at one of these cameras? This is this is the audience here, and that's your audience camera. Oh. If you want to look at that, and then oh. you can just talk to Brendan or okay, whoever. Right. It's... I, I don't talk to Brendan. He... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to ignore him. <laughs> yes, that's right. Chris is there. I'm here. We're, we're fine. He, he's a. It's, a, it's actually an animatronic. There's no one down there. He's a Disney oh. replicant. He's an AI. Yes. Imposter. Yes. <laughs> Better than being an a hole. Hey. Good night, an everybody. A hole. <laughs> well, hey, man, glad to, glad to have you here. Thank you. Good to you. see you in three dimension again. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, we've we've seen uh, many other dimensions over the years, haven't we? Yeah, we have. It, it mean, feels kind of like a you know we're past the end of an era, and it's sort of forming into a new one these mm -hmm. days. Okay, what's the new one? Is not well, the, the new age. one is, is no more ensembles, and we just see oh, each other at one. conventions or yeah, podcasts. Yeah, podcasts. <laughs> I miss the ensemble stuff we, we've talked about it before I, I like having people in the room i like interacting i like talking with people and if they say something it might inspire something different from you and uh you know i've said it before i won't belabor it but if you do an ad lib uh that they want to keep sometimes the line after yours doesn't work so that person has to come back in and redo something re restate it put, reconfigure it yeah so that it matches and makes sense which usually they don't complain because it's another session. But it's still a bit of an inconvenience. You know, I don't know. I don't know if you ever have that. Of course. Absolutely. With, and, and when you do the clones, they're, they're <laughs> I, I, I just love that you're the clones. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not, which clone are you? The clones. <laughs> yeah, a, I know. But which one? All 10,000 of them. Yeah. Except for Omega and, uh, and uh, Emery. I'm not. I'm not them. <laughs> yeah, well, hell with them. <laughs> who? See, I don't even know who they are. So the hell with them. Well, Omega was the uh, the linchpin clone sister in mm. the Bad Batch. Oh, her. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. She's a ne'er do well. Well, sort of. Yes, to uh, to good ends though. She she kind of saved the day in the end there. Oh, that's good. But uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean that that was a show where uh, for a lot of it, I was kind of <laughs> I sort served as the ensemble. Um, and I miss that show very, very much. Um, but that's that's like nothing else. I mean, it's such a it's such a, a an odd, uh, unique project that's like nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I, I mean, I was thinking today, just in the legacy of the shows uh, that you and I have done, that I really do miss ensembles. There's there's a lot yeah. of shows that I I miss not just the way that it's written. Um, and what the show is about, and then, of course, how people love it and how the animation looks. But you have this kind of Carol Burnett show sort of um, mm -hmm. collegial Revolving fun cast. Yeah. that the story, as you were saying, kind of comes from and that allows for a much more effective uh, improvisation and just the living theater of creating something together as a group, which is, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, that's why I got into... Why, why, I, why, why I gravitated to acting, I think, is because mm -hmm. it was a group activity. Um, these days, uh, it, it's, a, it's a weird way in where you start yeah. with by yourself in isolation, either on TikTok or YouTube, and then maybe you branch off into doing a podcast or, or maybe you collaborate with others, but it's less of a, of a theatrical, more straight Experience. ahead theatrical yeah. in. Yeah, it's a more um, linear... Yeah. Straight to. But then there are those of us, you know, like a Tom Kenny, for instance, Carlos Alzaraki, who come from stand-up, which is mm -hmm. solitary performing, but you're still connecting with a live audience, which I think is a really important part of learning the antenna of the intuition that you need in order to problem solve and create a story, you know, in real time efficiently, mm -hmm. which is, that's kind of the value that we bring as uh, as session players, which is really how I think of myself, yeah, is is part of an ensemble that's mostly anonymous, 
not mm-hmm. really in it to be front and center doing the rock star solo necessarily, sure. although there's times where, where, it's, where it falls to us. But for the most part, we're there to, uh, to connect and uh, with others, to read the room, to read the script, and to work with the producer and the writers to find something that flavors the stew uh, as, as beautifully as we possibly can. Mm-hmm. And we do that together as a group, not... Uh, and it's, I think it's more of a challenge to do in isolation, especially if you don't come from the experience of having had right. done that in some way. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Well, I really, really like recording with others. Yeah. You know, and COVID smacked us all around yeah. for, for a while. And, um, you know, I've, and we've stayed that way, regrettably. You know, I'm like uh, we've done uh, Mickey Mouse Club. Mickey Mouse House of Mouse, Mickey Mouse Fun House, fun, you know, on on for about 30 years. And it, when we did a few of them, very few of them, I just thought they were great because you feed off the other person's energy. That ad lib, well, he said something a little different. Now I'll say something a little different. And, and if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, you just go over it and do it again. Yeah, I think so, the energy of the other performers, it, it not it only fuels but it inspires Mm -hmm. and it's uh it really makes everything just that much better i think you can get close to that if you if you have good people Mm -hmm. um uh good performers and then and and the creators know what they want Mm -hmm. but if there's more searching involved (laughs) yeah or 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 maybe those on the other side of the glass are less uh theatrically inclined shall we say Right. That it's more effort to find something that fits beautifully in in the story that they're trying to make as good as they possibly can. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I know that um, you know a lot of people are prone to ad living. Uh, someone that we both know, but uh, I don't want this to come across as snide, so I'm not going to mention his <laughs> name. But uh, it's just something that happens, and uh, th- there is that fine line because what ho- what will happen is. You have a clever line. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Okay, but it stopped the story cold. You did your funny line. Now we have to kind of kickstart the, the storyline again. Yeah. And so I think if you can ad lib in character and it serves the storyline, yeah. you're good. But if it's just you doing, hey, waka waka, <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, you know, it's not so good. Yeah, it, I, I think of it like seasoning. I mean, uh, we did a... Uh, a little panel at SAG uh, this weekend for, mm-hmm. for voice actors. And that was one of the questions was, was what about improv? And to me, it's like asking, well, what about salt? Or what about yeah. seasoning? What about it? it? it it's yeah. like, well, let's taste the soup and see if it needs it, you know? And, mm-hmm. and just a little bit, you know, a little can go a long way on that. And once you put in too much, you, you've kind of need to start over or change mm-hmm. things in, in mm-hmm. a really substantial way. And and so it's very case by case and in the moment and mm-hmm. and and specific to the story that's being told. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to serve the story first. Yep, got to serve the story. Yeah, and that's I mean that's kind of that's the role of a session player mm-hmm. of a voiceover session player is to is to do that kind of e- efficiently and beautifully and um, with a sense of fun and and so you're in and you're out quickly. But it, it, it felt great, and it solves it. Often, uh, it ends up being better than they ever hoped. That's what you want mm-hmm. uh, with what you bring, that you bring something that not only fulfills it, but it exceeds expectation. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. done in this efficient way so that uh, you you justify the price tag, the union price tag of bringing in a professional, mm-hmm. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and hopefully even more than the bare minimum of the people. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so true. One of my favorite quotes of yours, Dees, is that you were just touching on, my job is done well if nobody thinks about me, if I'm invisible. Yeah. And it's true because as as you were touching on, when they bring in these big names now, it's all about, oh, we've got this guy voicing this character as opposed to how good is this character. It's it's more about who's voicing it these days. Yeah. It's, um, it makes the marketing people happy to bring in famous people. And sometimes right. a famous person can deliver the goods. But for me, um, and maybe that's just because of, of my career, but it, it's also just somebody who likes to watch this kind of stuff that is distracting. I don't want to think about, I, I frankly don't want to see behind the scenes. And I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to think about the actor 
playing the role. I, I want to think about the work. I want I want mm-hmm. to see the story. That's what matters to me. That's mm-hmm. what matters to me as a as a voice actor. Yeah, and they're but, not all Robin Williams anyway. Right, right. I mean, he he was kind of the 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 Roman candle that started yeah. this whole fireworks show of bringing in someone who is a name and then building a character mm-hmm. around it. And that that was a brilliant choice yeah, I think. it worked there yeah it worked beautifully Very there well. but now for me it gets in the way there's there's trailers i won't say which but like there's there's trailers now where they they're really hammering it in who the famous person is that's talking right now and yes. so then you're watching the trailer just thinking of the famous person and it's like wow this really takes me out of the trailer which mm-hmm. probably tells me too, too much of the story anyway in addition um mm-hmm. and it's just but it, i mean it's it's just one more feature of I think an industry that's more uh, fearful and money angled and less creative. And um, I mean, some of the, my favorite movies I've ever seen were movies that I didn't know who any, who any of these people were. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think back, I, there's oh, just sure, any, yeah. any number of examples like Star Wars is like, when I was a kid, oh, saw Star it. Wars. Yeah, I didn't know anybody in that movie. Didn't I didn't know, know anyone. anyone at all. Not a, not that was a not one. what was drawing me into that movie, or what no. made me go see it a hundred times afterwards. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it was a great, innovative movie that was afraid to make bold, creative, interesting choices that came together and worked beautifully. That's what made me love that movie. Not that there were name brand people that I was going to see as as famous people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that and the sound of the pew pew. And pew, pew, pew pew absolutely that, that, <laughs> I, I just that really is so damn cool and and then not to divert too far off there but I saw the the making of Star Wars and uh, do you know how they did that they got that the face the uh, the laser rifle uh, sound how? they went out to the country got a big giant telephone pole that was held in place with a really thick strong cable oh. and hit the cable with a hammer Ah. That's it. I love that. That's it. And they dipped it in reverb. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Now we've got a thousand gunshots. There's something so, so wonderfully open uh, and and innovative about mm-hmm. everything about that original Star Wars. And oh, it's, God. Uh, it's we really lack. It was the, first time for everything. It, it really was. And it wasn't a, an expensive movie per se. Um, it... Um, I think it cost less than uh, Logan's Run, which came out a few months before, and everyone was like, ooh, ooh Logan's Run, the yeah. big special effects movie. And then right. <laughs> all of a sudden, here comes Star Wars, like, uh, bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, so true. <laughs> and uh, it's just, it, 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 it's more and more, especially in a movie cinema, it's, uh, it, it, it's hard to find something that just knocks you in the face and just mm-hmm. say, wow, I've never seen this completely didn't expect it mm-hmm. and it's and it's full of, of really bold creative choices like that rather than you know replication of an IP that everybody knows which I mean to be fair there's a lot of great examples of really good uh, standard you know IP that that's mm-hmm. that's beautifully done big tent poles big names big expense and it's good or, or it can be really good <laughs> often though it's it, it can be a little flat a little tiresome a little a little uh, too expected and too familiar, and uh, it's just kind of a big money machine. But um, mm-hmm. but maybe I mean maybe Hollywood's always been a version of that where oh, yeah. the well, money calls have, yeah. the the shots and and in, like you know Buster Keaton, this innovative director, we're just going to use him as kind of a funny guy to do some not so funny lines, and he's he's just going to do his thing, and mm-hmm. we're doing these musicals, and you know you just kind of you don't really pay attention to being creatively innovative when you're making this giant money machine mm-hmm. um, in in the big sausage factory of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> we make a lot of sausage. We do, and some of it's quite tasty. But uh, yeah. <laughs> some, that's a little overcooked or too big, and <laughs> I, can't, I can't eat that much. That's right. <laughs> oh, God. Now, you, you have been, because uh, I, I do my notes here, and I'm trying to think of the first time that we might have worked together. Was it Phineas and Ferb? Well, um, it could Because you did some... Yeah, you, yeah, I did incidentals, and I, and I did, did the sound of, <laughs> of Perry the Platypus. Right. Um, but uh, I was <laughs> never Can you give us a, some Perry? Perry's, <laughs> Perry's just... 
just like that. I know. That's, <laughs> that kills me. That's this a, guy's got more sounds in him. It's that's, like, you're like Frank <laughs> Welker's soul son or, or something like that. Well, Did that he, come out right? He's a great inspiration, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And he's the best. And he's, I always I said, he's like, he's Coke and I'm, I'm like, uh, RC yeah. Cola. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I've I've all, I've often said that he, he's the Beatles, and the rest of us are really trying to get into the Stones. Yeah. <laughs> the because he's the Beatles. Yeah, and yeah, and, and that's another beautiful example of when I was starting out three decades ago in Hollywood, is to be in the room uh, with him and you and and Charlie Adler and Tress and and others like that who are really online, really confident. And and I could I could see you know being this little insecure kind of comedy oriented weirdo um, how you present yourself and how you bring the power that's unique to you into a session so that it's collaborative and so that it's fun and so that mm -hmm. it really adds this fantastic element to what's happening and that I needed to find my own version of that that mm -hmm. it, that the answer is not to to try to replicate any of that right but you learn from that and you you sort of catch. The spark from it and ignite your own flame, and um, I'm I'm just very very lucky that I came into this industry with that sort of an education available to me mm -hmm. when I was auditioning. It's it's one of it's one of my my soapboxes too that the that the new generation they they can't they can't learn from others in the audition booth. There isn't even an audition booth anymore. There's you're sitting yeah. by yourself and you're trying to diagnose. It's like being a doctor where you can't talk to the patient, you can't touch the patient, you have to just kind of look the patient over and then try to come up with what, what needs to be done. Yeah, and, I and, agree. And this generation has to really search in the dark for the right kind of tone, the right kind of pace, right. and the right angle uh, for auditioning, which I think is the hardest thing to do. Yeah. So I, it used to be when I started, it's like, well, some have ISDNs, but you want to go easy on that because mm -hmm. some people get their ISDNs where they audition from home and then suddenly they just stop booking. Mm -hmm. And now that's everybody. Yeah. <laughs> where yeah. The, it's hard it's for true. everybody without the input uh, to, right. to kind of triangulate what it is you want to do. <laughs> well, it's good to have somebody who, who's got a pipeline to the producer, if not the producers themselves. Yes. Not the, the directors and the people hiring. And uh, there was a place, uh, happy to mention it, called The Voicecaster, where some of the best things that ever happened to me happened there first through the audition process. Yeah. They call you in. They give you the sides, which is the script. The, and uh, you put your head, wrap your head around it and... You know, you study it, look look at it for like 10, 15 minutes, and then you go in, you audition, you, and you leave and wait. And that's kind of the way it was always. But now we're sitting in our closets or wherever, home studios, and, you know, recording this, recording that, then we're editing it. Now you're the editor now, you're the producer now, you're, you know, you're the talent. And uh, then you set it out and wait, and it just, it's not the same. It, it just doesn't feel like the same. Because yeah. you don't feel like you're performing. Because the the people who are on the other side of the glass, as I say, they, they for me they're an audience first, and if and if there's a bit of an audience factor there, I tend to elevate. I tend to yeah. I'm, I'm a little better. It's a meaningful part of the equation it, uh, of what's yeah. happening. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Just better. Yeah, and to to sit in the in your little audition booth at home, and you're wearing all these hats. Mm -hmm. that you're, you may not be trained in and are not part right. of why you got into this. No. It's like, I didn't get into acting or voice acting to be a director or a producer or, or, or an engineer. engineer. And these are all things that you need to be good at. Yeah. Otherwise, what talent you have, it won't matter because mm -hmm. it stops at the audition yeah. if yeah. it's not good enough. It's getting a bit squandered. And it's... um. Yeah, it's a great conundrum. Um, the, the, the union, the, fortunately, they're offering a lot of free workshops with a lot of good people coming in. So, so you know, those who are, who are uh, aspiring to this can see face to face, in addition to maybe studying with somebody who knows how to do this, mm -hmm. um, hopefully face to face. And I would love if, if I mean, for me, I, I also, for me personally, um, doing things like stand up and improv, where you're working with a mm. live situation. Oh, yeah that you know you've got you've got copy that might work in this context but now it's got to work in this context with these people 
and you start to be able to um, dance, tap to dance, read the room, and yeah, and and find it, you know, with whatever this audience is, mm -hmm. and that was hugely important to me in mm -hmm. in being ready for for doing this kind of work was improv in particular. Oh yeah, and did did you do stand up? I or? did. I, I did stand up for a couple of years, and and the lifestyle didn't appeal. Um, but well, you I were learned on the road. You, that was rock and roll. Yeah, you were... yeah. You learn a lot from that, uh, from doing it, but also from the others who are doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and and for for those who are trying but aren't, they're never going to make it. Those who've made it but wish they could get out. Uh, those oh, who are boy. just going to go straight to to sitcom, mm -hmm. which is how it was in the late '80s. And then I also did um, I did a, a couple of years of improv uh, with uh, SAC Theater. Mm. It was just theater sports in Orlando, Florida, uh, with the likes of uh, Wayne Brady and, and Jonathan Mangum mm. and others. And I really learned a lot very quickly from that. It's like, I like this. It turns out I think I'm good at this. And, um, and then it brought me these improvisational antenna mm. that I use now all the time. That's, mm. that's vital to what I think we do is it's, yeah. it's highly improvisational. That is, you're oh, ready... Yeah. You're ready to steer it in whatever way it needs to go, mm -hmm. and um, and that's the fun of it, and that's you know that's that's it that that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You give them one as written and one as it should be. Right. <laughs> that's that's right. For better or worse, that's kind of my. Hopefully, philosophy. they're receptive. Sometimes they aren't. Sometimes yeah. they just want to hear what they did, and oh yeah. Sometimes they just want the line read. It's like okay, I'm a session player. Sure. And 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 I will do it. Tell me the line, and I will say it as you did. Yes. But if I can, I'm going to try to <laughs> yeah. give it to you the best that I think that it can be. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times, you're right. It's compelling. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a way, you're kind of hired for your opinion. To be really bit, good yeah. at something means that you've got a really strong, compelling, uh, sensible mm -hmm. opinion that of what needs to happen, and it brings others along. It doesn't threaten them, and it helps. And uh, that's that's kind of how I think about it these days. Is that mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're hired for an opinion in a way? <laughs> that's true. No, you're right. Yeah. What do you think about this? Yeah, well, I think chances are, put that uh, copy in front of you. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a strong take on this, right? Like this, right? And that strong take is very probably going to be the best thing that you can give them. Mm -hmm. And and that's. It's not like this sorting, searching process, mm -hmm. but you lock right into it because you know what you do mm -hmm. and you know the whole orchestra that's available and you just dial up those instruments and here mm -hmm. it is. And yeah. this is the best it's going to be. It may not be what you want, but this is the best, my, my best that version I've got, of yeah. Well, I always joke, my, my line is, instincts are the best stinks. <laughs> you know, so, you know, if it, if it works inside your head, chances are someone out here in the world will agree. Yeah. And if not, well, then you go back to the drawing board. All right, we'll do it your way. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's doable, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What was your very first job? Well, um, did we I, I mean, touch on that? Is it? My first, uh, I mean, like my first showbiz job, I, mm -hmm. I um, well, it was a game show called Legends of the Hidden Temple, and I voiced this giant talking rock in this kid's game show on Nickelodeon. Oh. Uh, before that, I had done stand-up in children's theater and plays and musicals and uh, 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 shows at Disney World and oh yeah, uh, just uh, yeah. All you kinds. used to work at Disney World. Yeah, I worked at Disney World four and a half years doing a wow a um, kind of a sketch improv show and then also kind of street theater storytelling in the World Showcase at Epcot and then I was also the walk around Beetlejuice at Universal Studios when that opened up in 1990. <laughs> In Orlando, and I go, <laughs> so I go from you were the doing walk around Beetlejuice. Oh yeah, I get yeah, yeah. Come on, come on over here. Let's take a picture. That kind of stuff. Um, oh man, that's <laughs> great. It, yeah, I do these squeaky clean um, uh, family shows during the day, and then at night I go over and don the Beetlejuice makeup and just Whew. kind of harass people in 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 a way that they just loved, and it was yeah, it was it was perfect. Sure, I mean, sure, it's like, yeah. Here, Beetlejuice, harass my girlfriend, or <laughs> okay. hey, Beetlejuice, take a picture with me and my friends, or whatever. Oh, that must have been. And everybody a ball. laughs. It's a kind of freedom that I just can't, I can't describe. But it was yeah. all the things I liked. It was character. Well, yeah. It was improvisational, and uh, and it's about stepping over boundaries, but in a 
in an amicable way, mm -hmm. but you're stepping over boundaries, especially as Beetlejuice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and everyone is on board for it, except for the elderly. The elderly weren't on board with Beetlejuice, but everyone else on down was just very much come over and harass us and say oh, inappropriate sure. things. And I well, do. It's, it's like the, the reason that people like Don Rickles. Right. You know, it's kind of something in that, in that neck right. of the woods. Right, come over and let me have it. Yeah. And, but you do it in a way that you know, I mean, it's like you're you're coming after me, but you like me. Yes. And, and we're doing this together, and yeah, isn't yeah, this yeah. fun? And, and, I, <laughs> and we're both doing it. Look what we're doing. It's, yeah. and, and it's it, it's exciting, and it's fun. And yeah. Yeah, so that that's kind of where I started was with that. And then the Nickelodeon game show and the, and the host, Kirk Fogg, said, come check out Los Angeles. And I, I was starting to do voiceover work out there at the time. And I was doing kind of, I like out there meaning in Orlando. In Orlando, yeah. And I like doing the character stuff on stage. And when we do like improv, I would do uh, odd characters. I like to sing. I was doing mm -hmm. singing training, so my, my voice was strong, and I, I like doing weird things with my voice. And so I just said, "Yes, I'll, you do." I'll, I'll, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, uh, I, "I think um, I'll just try checking out Los Angeles." Mm -hmm. My wife was uh, was good for that too because she was an actor, and we just said, "All right, well." Life's good out here in Orlando. It's sustainable. We have health care. We have, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a steady job, lots of different stages to perform on. Interesting weather. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it can get bigger and better and who know, go who knows where in L.A. So we're of the age, mm -hmm. let's just give it a try. And happily it worked. You just, yeah. you just don't really know until you yeah. you dive in if you can really swim in those waters. But it, um, yeah, right. it worked out. It worked out. How for me, old really. were you when you did that? Um I, I was, uh, I, I would be around 29 or 30. Um, I'm, I'm 62 right now. So yeah, so it was like half my life ago. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's I, I think you've, you've got to, you've got to sort of strategically jump off diving boards mm -hmm. throughout your life, um, mm -hmm. at, at all stages in life. And, um, even now, uh, I think it's important you know, even in a later stage of a career as a as an as a as a freelance actor and artist, is that you've got to find things that you like and that are odd and that challenge you and that may be a big swing at the towards the fences, but you still got to do mm -hmm. it. I yeah. mean, for instance, I went and saw um, they did a staging uh, a concert staging of Randy Newman's Faust that I saw this weekend. Oh, really? Uh, and it was... I, I, I had that... I got that, bought that album. It was, <laughs> it was great. It was really was it? great. They. It, it's Will an interesting story. Will you on over? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, and he is so sly. His lyrics. Oh, yeah. my God. I've, I've, I've always been a huge fan of him. And Me here too. he is. He's this old lion who's done all of these different things. Oh. And he, he put together this thing that was a musical that started out big and the book wasn't quite right. And they trimmed it down to this uh, live performance that they did uh, this weekend. And apparently he was very happy with it. I loved oh, it. I thought they, they fixed a lot of things about the, the storyline and added more humor to it. And it was, it's exciting for me to see someone who's, uh, you know, later in, in their career mm -hmm. who's still really going for it. Mm -hmm. Even Megalopolis. Francis Ford Coppola, bless his heart. I mean, he's swinging big and swinging for the fences. And for me, because I respect and, and, and admire his artist's heart, I, I'm on board for him. Mm -hmm. Whether or not I think the movie is successful, I think there's something really admirable about an artist who is not afraid to swing big and to try something and just see if it works. And mm -hmm. I, think that's, I think that's really that's cool. It's not bad, yeah. I think it's really cool. That's good stuff. Wow, well, who better than Randy Newman? He, yeah. he, you know, his lyrics and his, he's, you know, he's my close personal friend. In fact, let's call him. Um, let's do. <laughs> no, but, he, <laughs> no, but uh, it's, uh, you know, it's one of my honors to, to uh, actually, I do know him. And, uh, oh. and, you know, I've sung any number of his songs. And so that kind of helps. He's and, magnificent. Uh, he's and most people don't know what he's done. They don't know yeah. the songs that he's written for himself. Yeah, and he and they all there are stories that have music in them. Yeah. You know, I remember way, way back in Louisiana in Louisiana when I lived in Louisiana, he wrote that song, Louisiana, Louis they're trying to yeah. wash us away. Yeah. And it was about the great uh, flood of nineteen twenty nine and yeah. how it just about literally did almost wash away Louisiana. Yeah. 
and uh, you know, and it just still resonates. And and he's like the uh, the poet laureate. He is. He's like a, a Mark Twain song songster of of, yeah. of, That's of good way today. To put it. I mean, he's got this folksy but biting intelligence oh, that no is kidding. it can break your heart or it can just make me laugh more than anything because uh, he he has what nobody has anymore irony. Yeah. And and he's he is he's masterful at that. If you if you check back his last few albums uh, not soundtracks. I'm talking about his song albums. Mm-hmm. You know, Harps and Angels and all that. I mean, it's it's some of my favorite songs of all for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I was he's really gratified treasure. to see how well his Faust came off. And apparently, mm-hmm. he had been there at the first performance and was very pleased with it. And the audience was pleased with it. And I just I felt good for Randy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're not worried about him either. He's he's doing fine. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> That's good stuff. That is good stuff. So I have some questions for you. Ask me some questions. What <laughs> I I want, would like to know, who of of all your characters is your favorite? Um, my favorite. Who's your favorite clone? That one. No, that, you know that <laughs> well, one that was the favorite clone. That's a tough one. Uh, no, I think it's, I think I was kidding. I hope <laughs> unless you have a really cool answer. Well, <laughs> the one that breaks my heart the most is Fives. He died really tragically, uh, and he was a heroic. He was a hero that came that close, and uh, he, he's he's one that breaks my heart that I really love. But I really, I mean, ninety nine and Rex, of course, and I, I can't really narrow that down very well. Right, I know, I know. I, that was a trick question. But it was. <laughs> let, let's see. I'll I'll narrow it down to a couple. I'll say that it yeah. was it was really fun. It was thrilling and 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 scary and adventurous mm-hmm. to um, to to perform Daffy Duck in Space Jam. Um, mm. That was early in my career. I wasn't. I'd only been out here for a couple of years yet, and mm-hmm. I didn't know any better. And I didn't. It's not like I'd worked up a Daffy Duck impression because I really didn't. I'm not really an impressionist. I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm not really drawn to it. I can I can do it if I'm forced, but I generally am not drawn to it. But okay, now you're drawn to it. So you have to give us, <laughs> you have to give us a little. Uh, let's let's all laugh at the duck. Let's sort of <laughs> like I I mean it's like I, I I if if I could be Daffy Duck, I would love to be Daffy Duck. This kind of benevolent chaos. <laughs> yeah, he's all over the place. That's right, all over the place. Um, but it was fun to be thrown into that mix with the the challenge of a classic character like that right. that I resonated with, and then to have to be working with Ivan Reitman. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, and Billy West, and, and and on this whole big production, got to work with Michael Jordan for a day, wearing the green suit, and it was um, it was mm-hmm. thrilling and exciting, and also an education. Um, in in that uh, we weren't invited to the premiere, because <laughs> Ivan Reitman's secretary told me that that was for the actors. What I kind of <laughs> oh my god I remember wow. that. <laughs> I and remember so, that. And so, yeah, so the story goes that Billy Billy West, oh. uh, he, he got his agent to call up, and finally they gave two tickets oh. to me because I was Daffy and two to him because he was Bugs. Yeah. There was only 15 voice actors, and and yeah. so my wife gave There's up her ticket. There's only half ticket. the cast. Yeah, yeah. It, um, my wife gave up her ticket so I could take oh. Porky Pig, which is Bob Bergen, to the premiere. We, we show up at Grauman's Chinese Theater. And, um, you know, the big guy with the clipboard and the sunglasses and the, and the yes, earpiece. Yes, in the ear. I'm sorry, sir, you're not on the list. You're at the theater on, over to the side over here, this little theater that the yeah, executives are not going a, to. There's a sheet up on the side of the building, and there's a guy with a projector. <laughs> and so I'm like, I am the star of this picture. That's I right. insist, Mr. <laughs> and so, you know, it, it was a little less than just in terms of how the, the, what's, what's, what's at work in Hollywood and how things play out. And so I didn't take it as as a, as an affront. Yeah. And plus, this is exactly what would happen to Daffy Duck if he were actually yeah. in a movie. He would not be allowed into That's the true. theater. <laughs> so I think this is actually kind of appropriate. No, no I know Bugs personally. <laughs> I know him personally. I am the st- listen. Yeah. I, you see that poster right there? You know that. Yeah. That kind of yeah. <laughs> but oh. it, it, was, it was a great lesson, and it was a Come great on. adventure, and it was kind of a of a launch that um, I think affirmed um, some co- little more conf- confidence in myself, mm-hmm. and um, which I think you carry with you into your auditions, and that leads to mm-hmm. more work. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Yeah. 
What I find amazing about that story is that you improvised most of the lines in that film anyway, yeah. Space Jam as Duffy. And you think yeah. you essentially created the jokes of that movie, but they're not going to let you in the premiere. It boggles my mind. Yeah, well, that's just that's just the power structure of an event, of a, of a, of a premiere. There's a whole power structure that's in play that is not... It's not about a, a meritocracy sorting of who deserves and who should be. It's no. really about power and the money and optics and all these other things that really optics for sure. They yeah. just don't matter. And and so ultimately it's like, that's yeah, all right. You can have your big thing that serves whatever your needs are, but it doesn't really matter to me that much. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, that was one of the great things about Ivan Reitman, who is the, the guy that really directed us. In, um, in, in the booth for Space Jam is that he's a friend of comedians and he knows to let comedians do their thing. You know, he, that's, he knows you're gonna get better if you let, let people do what they're good at. And, and, and he was- That's right. It, it's, it's, he skewed more towards, in, in directing it kind of the gradient is from control to freedom. Right, and some directors are very controlling, and they'll give you a line read, and they want it to be exactly this way, and it's a miserable long experience mm-hmm. that that goes on too long. Not very creative <laughs> on, for and you. On the other end is just the freedom of this. It's like, well, there's a script, but if you got anything better or something that works, just go for it, or let's try some stuff, um, and that <laughs> yeah. can be too free. But you know, Ivan Reitman was was very much on board with letting us try to make this funnier um, in the mad dash that that was. Uh, the making of Space Jam. <laughs> yeah. Were you and Billy in the studio together as Bugs and yeah. Duffy for that? Yeah, they, they'd, have us, they'd have us in the studio together, uh, really the ensemble, and we'd read through the script and we'd riff off of each other. And it it, it just, <laughs> it, it it wasn't run like, like it would be run by somebody who knows how to do animation. Because mm-hmm. there you isolate people so that you can, so that, the talking over that you're doing doesn't ruin the take, but that's not how we recorded it because we recorded by on-camera feature people. Mm. And so they're letting us step on each other and talk over each other, mm-hmm. and they're going to animate to that, which is, that's a it's little be tougher. dicier. And plus, there was only an, a year and a half of production on that movie, literally, before we got to get those T-shirts and pajamas and Target, and there's an opening date, and... So it was a mad rush, and a lot of money was spent all over the planet to get that thing finished. Plus, <laughs> Ivan Reitman, the, the, the way he did it was that we would do our jokes and takes. They'd go back and animate it, and he'd say, uh, we, need, we need to change this part. So we would go back and then re-record it, come up with new stuff, and they'd have to go back and reanimate it again. Oh, yeah. So the, the, the animator... That sounds cheap. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. It's, that's, that's, uh, that's not usually how you do it it's it's that's how you do on camera not animation uh the animator put it he said with with on camera you shoot it first then edit it later with animation you edit it first then you shoot it (laughs) Mm -hmm. and they were shooting it like it was on camera so it was it was it was quite a mad dash (laughs) that's why you weren't invited to the premiere (laughs) yeah i don't know i don't know (laughs) You touched on that you worked a day with Michael Jordan. We, we have to talk about that. What was that like? MJ well, in his peak. You know, it's, it's, I wish it were more interesting. I mean, ultimately, they, what I think they should have done was to hire the actual voice actors to, to don the green suits and to work with Michael Jordan. And I think it would have been even better. But that they gave to improv actors, I, I think, who did a good job, but they weren't really tasked with coming up with script ideas. And so they just had to go off of the script, mm-hmm. whereas we were were kind of yeah, empowered you, and enabled you the words. To, to bring stuff up so we could riff and we could have brought a lot more to it than we did. So it was just on that one day. And Michael Jordan, uh, I mean, he seemed very nice, very focused. Uh, there's Joe Pitka, who's lurking in the back. And, and Ivan Reitman was there, a little more engaged with us. And... Um, and we, you know, we, we do our scene, we, we go through a couple of scenes, but pretty much as written is all we could do. And then uh, Michael Jordan uh, disappears back into his entourage. Where they, they, they kind of swallow him back up and he goes back into the entourage and they go, I don't know, play basketball or have, have a sandwich or something, but kind of mm-hmm. isolated in his own kind of Michael Jordan bubble. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but it was fun and exciting and um, had a day of doing it, you know. Yeah. Get an autograph? Uh, no, I didn't dare. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> no. You wouldn't give him an autograph? No. Gee, what an elitist. No, I, I would not. Oh, man. <laughs> he could beg. Well, he, no he, way. He, he, <laughs> Yeah, okay, maybe 80, 50 bucks. How's that? <laughs> Give him a discount. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's wild. When did you truly first know that you were going to be doing this? Not the podcast. Uh, I, meant, I meant like, you mean you know, vo- just voice acting? Period. When did you get the bug? Uh, I, I'll tell you. I, acting, I, I, performing, I tap dancing, you know. Well, uh, when I came out here, I was open trying a lot of different things. I was doing on camera commercials. Mm-hmm. And commercial voice acting and auditioning for for uh, like little one off cartoons mm-hmm. like they used to have back in the old days of Hanna Barbera, sure, the yeah. water cartoons and that kind of thing. Um, but I was also trying to work my way into doing television and, and comedy. Comedy television fit me the best. Um, I did a little series called um, "The Journey of Alan Strange" mm. uh, for Nickelodeon, where I was an on camera uh, UFO nut. Mm. I had to dig deep for that. <laughs> and uh, mm. but anyway, so I, I was auditioning, and there was one point it was working on Cow and Chicken, which was my first really oh, full sure. series with uh, with uh, with the, the brilliant dre- the dreaded Charlie Adler <laughs> the bre- the dreaded but brilliant the dreaded but brilliant uh, yeah. Charlie Adler and Candy Milo very brilliant yeah. and and a lot of other just really monstrously talented people who taught oh, yeah. me a lot very quickly. Yeah, and I remember the producer of the on-camera show was going to take me to producers on this show, mm-hmm. and but it conflicted with a cow and chicken record, oh. and her her basic take that of the casting director was, well, are you going to go with me to producers? Um, can I? I mean, have I have I wasted my time with you? Um, are are you or are you going to go to do this little cartoon? Because if you can't. If I'm going to, you know, put you in, submit you, walk with you, and then walk in with you to producers, and you're going to bail on me, then we're done. That's basically the picture that I got, hmm. is it's like, this is a fork on the road, kid, hmm. and if you want to do your little voiceover thing, that's fine, but but that's it. And I just thought about it fairly briefly. It's like, uh voiceovers let's see it's air conditioned i don't have to memorize lines i get to work with really fabulous people it's quick it's close to home they only use me for like two hours maybe maybe three i think i'm going to be a voice actor yeah (laughs) and so pretty much then i i I called off the dogs and just said i think i'm just going to be a voice actor i can't i can't sustain trying to get two airplanes off the runway that Mm -hmm. are going in different directions yeah yeah Um, so, so that, that, that was, you know, that would be right, probably around 95 or six or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I well, kept you, doing commercials you and You made stuff. the right choice, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think so. It's, yeah. it's a suit that fits me well, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of fun, and, um, and it's something that I like that likes me, and, uh, you know, it's a great career. It's a, it's, yeah. I, I, I'm, 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 and interested. it's fun to do. It's great fun. I mean, I listen to a lot of memoirs and autobiographies on audiobook mm-hmm. of on-camera people that do movies or television or such, and I'm very interested in that, but I've never listened through one to say, gosh, I wish I had that career or wish I did that. It's like every time it's like, man, I'm really glad I'm a voice actor. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I really yeah. I have zero regrets about uh, going into voice acting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Same here. I had occasion maybe like three times to work with Rita Moreno, the mm. great Rita Moreno. Mm-hmm. And I and I remember, um, you know, I was kind of thunderstruck, obviously. You know, I mean, she, she's Maria. Yeah. You know, the, I mean, from West Side Story, I saw her my whole life. And uh, it was just amazing to be sitting there. And we were doing bonkers. Bonkers. Mm. Bonkers deep bobcat. And, uh, and she was there, and she, the second or third show, Second show, I think it was, she goes, okay, I just have to tell everybody here, this is the damnedest thing I've ever done in my life. And she's looking at her. She goes, I can't tell you how happy I am to be here with all of you crazy people. <laughs> you know, and, and, and she says, uh, this is, I've spent my whole life trying to calm myself down, trying to not be like this guy over here, me, 
<laughs> and uh, and and uh, what was I thinking? This is so much fun. This is so freeing. It's so and, you know. And she's looking at everybody, and 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 we're all going. Well, we're kind of glad to have you. You know, thanks for being here, Rita Moreno, who has an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and every literally every award you can get. I pretty sh- Tony has Tony, yeah. And um, and we're going. Rita, Rita Moreno likes us. This is pretty cool. Well, that's the right so, word though is freedom. There, yeah. There's it's and it's a, it's a it's a daily dose of mm-hmm. of uh, totally fresh freedom. That's yeah. a diff- it's a different one. Everything that comes at you, that's it's it's the fun. And the challenge of it um, is just to jump off a different diving board with a with a crazy character or a different idea mm-hmm. or a different style, a different tone. Yeah, that's, whatever works. It's, yeah. And it's it could be different things on multiple different shows a day, mm-hmm. and it's such great variety. And and it's I just feel bad for on camera or sometimes even stage actors who are just you're you're just in this little box that's and right. you're much more confined with your you know your physical type and everything else. And in voice acting, there's just there's this maximized oh, yeah. freedom, but it's mm. not easier. It may be free and it may be fun, but what you're bringing to bear as an actor is no less specific mm-hmm. and no less uh, contextually aware. And it's um, it's 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 an art, but it's kind of a hidden, invisible one mm-hmm. that I think people are only, for the most part, kind of superficially aware of, because what they see is the is the fun characters and the, and the voices coming out of mm-hmm. us but what they don't see is that that process that happens of coming up with the idea of finding the idea of of honing it so it's something that just works just right and beautifully and then moving on and clearing the deck for the next idea that's what's really impressive and and mm-hmm. beautiful to me about it mm-hmm. but it's it's kind of invisible uh, the 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 nuts and bolts process of it is is yeah. yeah now would you would you rather you know say you know God forbid some venerable actor passes away and now it's time to replace them need a, someone else to do that character it's still going now have you had experience with that and if so do you prefer that or is it easier to pick up a character that's established or do you prefer to start over start from scratch like uh with the the clone wars or you know yeah where it's it's you you're the you are the original you know uh, which do you have any comments on those well two? i mean with the clone wars the the template was, was tamara morrison originally from the features but mm-hmm. um I, I wasn't really expected to kind of hang close to that they let me move out from that into my mm. my own thing, uh, like 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 Anakin. Anakin, they let go much much further. I mean, Anakin mm. in the Clone Wars is very very different from the the Clone Wars, uh, the, the the prequels. Anakin, it's a very different character voice and a different tone and all the rest mm-hmm. of it. So there was freedom in that. I mean, for me personally, I don't I don't really want to copy what somebody else has done. I yeah. want to I want to do my own thing mm-hmm. that that works beautifully. And in some cases, it's like okay, they want Daffy Duck. Or oh, something sure. like that. It's like, well, that's okay, established. I've, I've got to try that's to do. That's pretty established. Yeah. yeah. But even with that, um, if something something like that that's that's absolutely established, you know, you can pick a decade and there's a different Daffy Duck to refer to. Yeah. And then also with the way it's written, um, you're going to bring some of your own version to it. Uh, I mean, I suppose mm-hmm. maybe you experienced that with Winnie the Pooh, where you're. You're you're really trying to stay as close as you can, but then you a freedom yeah. opens up. Yes, then it becomes yours. Yes, that's very very true. Yeah, I always thought that the uh, the first thing, you know, job one is you have to sound like it, like if if Pooh yawns, if Pooh has tummy trouble, if Pooh has the hiccups, it, it has to be him. Right, it has to sound like him. It can't sound like someone with the hiccups, yeah. or you know, and and then at that point. You know, it almost gets easier from there, because if you if you've got those little nuances down, you can elaborate on that, and and next thing you know, you're you're doing little soliloquies, and uh, yeah, and it, it just seems to be that way. You're no me. longer replicating, but you're generating. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. it's not a photocopy. It 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 might start kind of like that, where it's like here's the mm-hmm. reference line, here's you, here's the reference line, here's you. You're really trying to hit that, but then it opens up and becomes something that's nuanced mm-hmm. and 
and everything from just little incidental sounds like mm -hmm. you're saying to a, a whole paragraph of, yeah. of, of talk. Well, back when I very, very first started, and uh, I ended up being Winnie the Pooh very early, very, very early in my career. So it, he was gone for a little while, but they still wanted it to sound like the original, understandable, mm -hmm. very understandable. But the problem was that he was... In the like, for instance, oh gosh, Pooh ought to be in pictures. It was Winnie the Pooh, and Tigger and Rabbit. They all went to a movie theater. Now there were no movie theaters in the Hundred Acre. That that already boom right out of the gate is different. So he's not going to walk around saying "Oh bother" and pass the honey all day because there is no honey, and you're in a movie theater, where, which is a place Pooh never was. Yeah. So by circumstance, just by necessity. He had to grow. He had to be a little more, for lack of a better word, worldly. Yeah, it's a I different think. energy because a movie cinema is going to yeah. be in a, in a town, and that's a different energy from Hundred Acre, Wood. Acre Woods. Yeah. yeah, and they actually, I, I remember, I can see it now. Them walking in and out of the theater, and and it's like, okay, well, we've never seen this one before, have we? And uh, and the same was true with the movie Christopher Robin, which I I just was crazy about. I just loved it. You know, and uh, and it came along at a perfect time in my life too. It helped me out. Oh, nice! You know, so things like that, and um, it's these little touch tones. But you can't. Some characters you can grow like that, and some you just can't. You have to be true to the original. You know, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But every mission's different. You know, yeah. and you're and you're open to that. And sometimes, you know, something comes across the. Uh, the feed is like, you know, I just don't think, I don't think I have a good version of this mm -hmm. for me. Uh, it's mm -hmm. like, I just, I don't think I can make this sing. Yeah. I'll, I'll pass. Have I'm, you ever, oh yeah, oh, I was going to ask you, have you ever turned down an audition or a role? Yeah, I'll turn yeah. down, uh, I'll turn, let's, I'm trying to think if I've ever turned down a role. It, it possibly just, they just want me to scream or, or it's like, I, yeah. I, I can't, okay, that's, I can't yeah, gotcha. do that. Yeah, there um, are people for that. <laughs> but I, I'll occasionally get an audition where I'll read through it and then it's like I read the audition and I check out who's making it and, and I see kind of what this needs to be and, and I, I try it a little bit maybe and it's like, I just, I don't like what I'm doing. I don't, I, I wouldn't cast me. Um, I don't <laughs> think I can make something that's good from this. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to waste their time. I'm not mm -hmm. going to waste my time or my voice, but I, I'm, I'm not going to, I, I don't want to waste anyone's time. I, if I'm sending in an audition, starting with you, yeah, <laughs> well maybe, but I, I, what I don't want is to leave a bad impression. I don't want to send something that's like, what the hell was that? Or no, 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 no. I, <laughs> at very worst, I want to hear, oh, hmm, that's interesting. Uh -huh. uh, I can see it, not what we're going for, but yeah, but interesting. Okay, yeah, he, he. Took a big swing. Yeah, not gonna, not gonna. Yeah, do it. you know, I've had a couple of those too, because uh, you're trying out for one character, and then I can remember. I wish I could think of who it was. I can't remember the series, but they said, "Well, you auditioned for Joe Blow Blow." Yeah, well, they didn't like you for that, but you now your audition, they saved that because they want you to be the the janitor. Yeah. And I really love being the janitor. So, <laughs> you know, so I. I Okay. I'll, yeah. I don't care which key got me through the door. Yeah. I mean, right? I want to send in something that I'm proud of. That yeah. I that it's like yeah. at least I I don't feel like I'm wasting their time and I feel good mm -hmm. about it because I think people remember that uh, whether yeah. it's a casting oh, director yeah. or or a, or a director or a writer or whoever's listening to it. And I think you know, like I like to say that some auditions take ten years to book, mm. and if you do a good one today that doesn't work for this show, that was close, but not quite, but man, was it interesting or good. They remember it. They'll mm. remember a good audition, just like the- Yeah, that's uh, true. I You're think right. they'll remember a really bad audition as much as they'll remember a really good one. And I just want to have good memories, whether they're cast or not. Mm -hmm. So I, that's, that's what I aspire to in, in sending in auditions. Mm -hmm. Mostly I'll, I'll take a swing at it, especially if they say, it's a request, and they, they're thinking that I might have it, and they, they kind of are thinking. It's like, oh, okay, I'll, 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 I'll really, I'll try. I'll really try. Yeah, your client request. Yeah. I don't think I've ever gotten one of those. They, they, well, they, they, you, you should go over to blah, 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 because they've requested you. 
Oh, oh they did? And I said, so I won't be doing it. No, you probably yeah. won't be getting it. You know? <laughs> yeah, usually. Like, yeah, I, And I, it works that way. You're Weird. right. You're yeah, right. Usually. It does. If they're going like that, it's like, well, we're really going to hire, you know, uh, Miley Cyrus. But Oh, yeah, but, right. But we're wanting to give you a shot at, you know, the God, monkey. You get that too, huh, Miley? It's that little. <laughs> oh, good. Well, if, yeah, but... <laughs> well, actually, there, there was one where it was. Um, <laughs> With Miley Cyrus, ladies it, and well, gentlemen. <laughs> well, not quite. Close. Okay. It was, it was uh, uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Well, that and, is, uh, it gets got, no closer. I got to read, uh, I got to read for the monkey in that, and mm. we and we did a read through of it that was recorded, and then we said we might use it, we might not, <coughs> but we're going to record it. Kazunai, yeah, yeah, and um, and so I thought, well, it's a monkey. I do a lot of monkeys. I, I got a good monkey in me. Uh, I thought I did really great. <laughs> got one on your back, and the, and the movie came out. And it's Kate Blanchett as the monkey. <laughs> and she didn't do a bad job. She actually did a pretty good monkey, I thought. You're kidding. <laughs> and, and and she and this is the one from um Yeah, his, from a couple years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's Kate Blanchett as the monkey. So I mean, even wow. there it's like we gotta get a we gotta get a name. We gotta get a face for the monkey even. Oh so my it's like, god. It's like, oh, yes. I'm not even I'm not even I'm not bulletproof here anymore. <laughs> but oh. uh uh, <laughs> well, it was Salma Hayek, K. Blanchett. It's, it's tough. It's tough. How do you? How do you? Gonna... It's tough. Cry me a river. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cry me a river. <laughs> oh man, that is painful. How old were you when you knew that you were you you've been struck or or was there well, a, a big boing moment? Well, no. I mean, I I acted when I started doing plays in in musicals and such in second grade. And mm. I really liked doing plays and musicals, but yeah. I never thought I was an actor. Uh-huh. There were those who would, you know, they'd get up on their stage and Petruchio and and uh, Taming of the Shrew at my high school. Yeah. It's like, that cool. guy is an actor. Cool ways to meet girls, too. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's yes, that's one of the fridge benefits. But um, I, I never looked at it as a career. I, 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 first of all, didn't think that's really what I was. I didn't know what I was. Oh, really? And plus, it's like, I don't think you can earn a living doing that. There's nothing... I mean, you might. Huh. Now you you're know. talking like my dad, God rest his soul. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's, I, I felt that way all through college. I didn't study acting. I did a yeah. lot of performing. I did choirs and musicals and plays. So and I think that is study. Stand up. I mean, to, it, it, it was my version of it, but yeah. I never, even when I graduated college, there, there's, there's no way that I said to myself, now I'm going to be an actor, let alone a voice actor. Mm-hmm. But I kept doing those kinds of performing things that I thought were fun mm-hmm. and whether they, whether they paid or not, which mm-hmm. usually they didn't. I just did it because I liked it. Yeah. And I yeah, kept yeah, doing yeah. it until it's like, oh, I can make a little bit over here. This one pays, but actually this, you know, singing telegrams, not a life I want to really commit to. Um, but I made a little money there, I, you know. I did that for two day, a day and a half, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I, it was the worst thing. Yeah. It was over uh, Easter. And so I had to be the Easter bunny. Yes. And, and I'll tell you this, God, I'll make this brief. But I had to wear the stinking helmet, the big goofy, you know, where you, and it's this big with the ears and everything. Yes. And so uh, the little one comes through the door and I go, hey, uh, it's me, the Easter bunny. And I come on, my baby, you know, and I'm saying, I can't remember what it was. And I realized that I'm breathing the same air over and over again. And I'm, ha, I'm gonna pass out because I didn't have any fresh <laughs> oxygen. And I go, Sabby, do you? Ah! And I pull the thing off of my head, and I'm soaking in sweat. And the little five-year-old, ah! <laughs> you know, the Easter Bunny just ripped off his head. Some guy's head is in it. The Easter Bunny ate a guy, and a, and and the lady looks at me. She goes, "Are you all right? Why did you do that?" And I go, ah, "I just, oh." I'm so much better now. I can breathe now. Oh, come back, little. Why is she crying? You know, and so. Uh, and then you got to collect yeah, the money for that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's. Yeah. It's, yeah, give me 20 bucks. Or, it, I, it, I don't it, even it, think I got paid. I said, yeah. you know what? I should go. I That's, should go. It was part of an actor's education. I've, I've traumatized your child. My work here is done. Yeah. <laughs> but there are a lot of versions like that, like I said, where, you know, I tried for a little bit or a while, and it's like, I'm, I'm, I've learned from this. I just don't think I want to keep going. I, I want to move and just kind of keep trying other stuff. Mm. And um, then it would be like my mid, late 20s, 
where it's like, oh, I'm actually earning a living performing, you mm -hmm. know, whether it's uh, kind of a health oriented uh, musical for children for schools in Denver. Oh, and then, okay. And then theme parks. Health and, oriented. And then, all, but all this other kind of performing where I always looked at performing as just something I do because I like it. Yeah. And if it can pay me, then great. But the main thing is I've got to like it. I've got to like whatever this oh, version yeah. of it is. And I kept trying different versions of it until it finally just kind of narrowed into voice acting. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't, it really wasn't until my late 20s that I started kind of considering, look, it's like, oh, that's actually a career. And that mm -hmm. is actually fun. And I think I've got some of the skill set to make that. I might, I might, I don't know. I might be able to make it work, but maybe LA is too big or, or the, the, yeah. the gates are all up and no one's going to let me in. It's like, I don't know, but yeah, who I'll, knows? I'll, I'll give it a try. You, you just have to kind of jump out there and give it a try. Yeah. Well, I've said before, you know, I read, uh, and I was already into business for about five years. So I won't be, belabor this too much, but the, the great, um, Gordon Hunt, Hanna Barbera, he was the guy who kept, did all the Scooby Doo's and Flintstones, you know, on and on and on over the years, the voice director. He wrote a book, How to Break into Show Business. And the fifth one is How to Break into Voiceover. And, and I read this when I was already into business by five years. And, um, and it said, How to Break into Voiceover. Don't even try. You're not going to be <laughs> able to. There are four or maybe five people who do this. You're not one of them. They all live in Hollywood, California, where you don't. So don't. And here's chapter six. And I went, well, I'm glad I didn't read that sucker, you know, like five years ago. It's like, oh, so don't even try. And you figure, well, this guy knows. If anybody knows, it's Gordon Hunt. So, uh, I'm, well, in a way, it's. And I, I've told him, God rest <laughs> his soul. I said, by the way, you gave me the worst uh, <laughs> advice anyone ever gave anybody. He goes, what the hell? When did I do that? And I go, we hadn't even met yet. I, I read your book. He goes, voiceover? I go, yeah, uh huh, yeah, duh. You know, so. Well, I think it's useful. Um, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting story because I I think in the end to to do this kind of stuff you not only do it because you have the talent for it and the persistence and all that um, but you've really got to want to do it despite the negative despite the door slammed in your face mm -hmm. that you've not only got to kind of believe in yourself but you've uh, you've got to have this tenacity to uh, to set it through because you really believe that you have this and, mm -hmm. and that you're seeing, and then you start to see confirmation and that you take, uh, take criticism where it's, where it's useful and, 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 and it fits. But, um, mm -hmm. but in a way it's, it's like, you need to hear that, that the odds are terrible. Oh, that yeah. It's, there's, there is a, a, a deep bench of people who are very established and very, very good mm -hmm. that you're going to have to compete against and be as good or better than. And then there's a lot of luck. You're going to need luck as well. Everybody yeah, needs that. Yeah, nothing wrong with luck. And there's all of these things that seem to be in your way. But if this is what you've got to do and this is what you've got to try, then you've got to do it. Just don't be, don't be naive. Don't be, don't be an idiot. Um, Lord knows there's all kinds of, of, of resources that you can avail yourself of, mm -hmm. uh, not just the one book from Gordon Hunt. Uh, when I was coming into it, uh, I think it was Sue Blue's book. Sure. Yeah. She that's had right. one. And other than that, that was about it as far mm -hmm. as I could find. Yeah. But that now. Workshops. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. 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 But, but now you can really get the inside scoop and and get a lot of good details. I've, I've got my own website. I want to be a voice actor dot com that has a lot of uh, it has my my opinion on a lot of things about becoming a voice actor and it's free. But that information is out there. But it's you still got to be a person. I think who has to do this and who loves it and who has the talent for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I I completely agree. It's, like I said, I knew I was going to do this when I was five. And I, I still remember my dad saying, really? yeah, yeah, I was five. And um, I was sitting there, I don't want to drag this out, I've told it before, but I was watching Jack Benny show and Mel Blank was on mm -hmm. there and my dad goes, well, they see this bastard, he does Buck Duck Bunny and Daffy Duck and all that, blah, blah. And I thought, well, he, he he's not getting in trouble and having to stand <laughs> in the corner. But, well, I'll do that. 
and and I because whatever he whatever he's doing, people like him, and he's obviously making money. So okay, I'll do that. So you so, so you five. saw the goalposts at five. You saw yeah. it. Uh, oh yeah, the end zone I, was open. A- absolutely. It's, okay. And I never and I and I had a million other jobs, you know, on my way, but um, but yeah, it's. So that was, that was your it. North Star, that you you were always kind oh, of yeah. going towards that. Yeah, wow. well, I, I knew I'd never work in the steel mill, which I did, but I didn't wasn't going to retire from it. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. And uh, and so I just, you know, it was obvious. I moved to New Orleans. I was a deckhand on a riverboat. It's what you would do to break into voiceover. Then I designed Mardi Gras floats, obviously another easy entry. And uh, <laughs> no. then I moved to California and made a demo tape. And, and I just, I was very, very fortunate. I got a job from that. And it was for Disney, Dumbo Circus. And that lasted a year and a half. So it gave me a chance mm. to get an agent and everything. And now I get to hang out with you. Well, I, I think having a life experience of things that are not actor related oh, really yeah. is a, it's a good thing to have. Mm-hmm. I think someone who's, who's only trained as an actor can have a really narrow connection to the world and to themselves, and they can also be too refined. Mm-hmm. And, and there's an improvisational connection to life that having different kind of jobs and different kinds of experiences, I think can, you know, to have that available with you as a performer is really a, a good thing. It's a really, mm-hmm. it's a really good thing to, to be open to that and not just a narrow training. Although for some, I mean, some are like, yep, I always wanted to be an actor. I went to acting school. I trained to be an actor. Oh, yeah. And now it's like, well, there are those, there, there is that. Sure. But then there's some who just kind of kicked around and found their way in uh, on a, on a, on a lark and others it's kind of a mix of things mm-hmm. and they come from music or they come from stand-up oh, yeah. or, or, or from animation or all kinds of different angles as artists but they're storytellers and they apply that storytelling sensibility now to voice acting and they're, they're ready to do that but they can do other kinds of, of creative uh, collaborative creation as well mm-hmm. it's uh, yeah everybody finds a, a different path to it there's no one yeah. way yeah that's for sure I mean you hear Different stories. I mean, people like Corey Burton. He's like the, the historian of voiceover. I love the guy. Yeah, he's what, amazing. I mean, you know, you can't beat it. He he knows, he knows the type of microphone that they used, what Captain Hook used, yep. for, and he's got three or four at his house. You know, it's it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's a, an interesting yeah. interesting way to make a living. Yeah, I really miss being around him and and seeing him do his thing. Uh, which I got to see a good amount of in oh, yeah. uh, in the Clone Wars in particular, mm-hmm. um, to see to That's someone right. just, who, who was he? He played um, he, he played Cad Bane and um, but oh, also um, oh, the uh, late, the big wizardy bad guy who was oh, right, right, right. He, yeah, he played um, uh, Duke Count Dooku, Dooku, Count Dooku. Yeah, Dooku and Bane and and probably other stuff too. But it's just yeah. it's to to be in a room. Mm-hmm. And, and see someone do that mm-hmm. it, in a way that everything that's coming out of his mouth is like this, yeah. this unexpected kind of almost frightening surprise. <laughs> yeah. that, and it just doesn't stop that. And, and it's so effortless. And, mm-hmm. and, it, and it's, it's just, it's, it's both intimidating and invigorating and, and it's amazing. Inspiring. And inspiring. And, and to be in the booth with that mm-hmm. as you're telling a story together with that it's such an education. It's such mm. a, a, an actor's education to be um, in and the it's presence. A, it's of a that. bit of a booster shot too. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So, so th- I could do that. This is possible. Okay. Right. Yeah. You, you, you can raise the 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 goal a little, a little right. higher. Right. Because then you say it's like, look what he's pulling out of himself. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he walks into the yeah, room. Yeah. He's a chatty Kathy. And then he gets going, and it's like, look at that. Uh, he's not his default. That was a mask. He's got lots of different defaults. Maybe well, I've got yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's more in me uh-huh. than just this thing that I've been doing that people liked. It's like, well, maybe I'll try some more of that or some more of this or, or mm-hmm. you know. And then you start to see, oh, I can, I can branch this myself uh, creatively in these different ways. And I wouldn't have known that. Mm-hmm. If I couldn't see someone who can do that kind of switch up 
mm-hmm. um, with such ease and such and such brilliance, like him or like Charlie or like you. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's really a wonderful education uh, to see that and to be in the presence of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I'm very very lucky that you know that I came in. I, I feel like I kind of came in at the tail end mm-hmm. of this era that has now shifted into a different gear. That um, you yeah. know, every era I think has different technologies and different challenges um, to the space, but it's it's shifted away from from being collaborative theater mm-hmm. and in a way that's um, I think is like I said it's 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 much more difficult for those who are starting out. I think so yeah to, to key into it. Yeah nowadays it would be I don't know how. I, I mean I, not to discourage anyone, but it's a it's a tough road to hoe. yeah. Tough road to hoe. But if you got to do it. Do you think there's realistically a future for aspiring voice actors in major motion pictures anymore? Look, I think there's always a place for talented, smart, problem-solving creatives. Um, because just being a pretty face or being you know, an on-camera star who's a very good actor, that's not enough. And we are, we are session players who are brought in to collaboratively solve problems to, 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 to pick apart puzzles and make them work beautifully. And that's a very useful skill to have a good opinion on how to problem solve something that's just coming together. We didn't know, we, we didn't know what we're going to do. It was just rewritten last night and to have somebody step in and say, I've got a really good idea with this and then kick that right out. How about a different one? Yep. That too. And then you, you make your choice and you move on. The power to be able to bring that to other people is a very valuable power. And I think if you've got the creative goods, if you've got the, the self-possession and the experience and the confidence to be able to bring that, then you will find work because actually the work will find you. It's not, you won't have to find the work. The work comes to you because people remember someone who does a good job who's great to work with, who mm-hmm. solved it and just moved on and it was effortless, it was fun and it was, uh, it was unexpected, it was better than you thought it was gonna be. You never forget a person who brings that to you because the, the stories mm-hmm. that we create are grand collaborations of you know a, a few hundred people and there's great uncertainty involved in the process of making something and that part of what we do and what we bring as a session player is to bring confidence and reassurance, to to extinguish doubt, to to make the path to the golden finish line mm-hmm. even more clear and even more well illuminated. That's what we bring. If you're someone who can bring that kind of magicianry to, that's not even a word. That's not a word. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> it is now. <laughs> if you can bring that kind of stuff, the work will find you. It may be different kind of work. It may be work that changes or is of, of different consistency, but the work will find you if you can bring that, I think. So you're another failed mime too, huh? Another failed mind. Yeah, mime. I'm just reading my books in my tower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Do you man. think with that, with that mindset there would be a fear to improvise because you're trying to create what they've already created? You want to give them what they've already created as opposed to give what you think they should have created? Well... You're, whatever you're bringing is always in service of the story. And hopefully your mm-hmm. antenna are, are um, educated enough that you can bring something that's appropriate. That's, that's always, I mean, improv is all about making the others look good, not you. That's the key. If you're, you're not there trying to be a show off or trying to get attention for you, you wanna make them look good. You wanna make the story look good. Mm-hmm. And then if you fall off the stage or fall on your face, that's actually a bonus. Then it gets a laugh because that's a genuine, it's, it's a genuine um, face plant, but you're helping the story and you're helping the others. That's the attitude, I think. You start out as an actor, a lot of actors, where you want yourself to look good. You want to do a good job. You want mm-hmm. to be praised. You want your applause. You want to stand out. You want all these things, me, 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 me. But when you're a session player, when you're an improviser, really when you're a voice actor, you have to, angle your whole attitude to make everything else look good. Mm-hmm. That's your job. That's a great that's great advice. That's words to live by there, I would think. I I'm going to look like an idiot doing what I do. 
Yeah, I looks. It's ugly. It's it's grotesque. It's humiliating. It looks awful, and that doesn't matter because I'm doing my job of making something that they want that's useful. And if it's like, you know, it's like. Well, I kind of like the one where you grab your, <laughs> where where you grab your your nose there and pinch it and, you know, I don't even know what you're doing there, but it's. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's that, modifying yeah. the column of air by. By closing off my nose, you can. It just, you know. Yeah, uh huh, it's, sure. It's playing the orchestra. Yeah, I was just going to say that. <laughs> Everybody sing along. Yes. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Join in, won't you? <laughs> Kids, try this at home. Do. Do try it at Do home. Do try it. Do. That's that's the problem start when you stop trying. You gotta, that's right. You gotta you gotta keep doing that weird stuff. Yeah. Follow your weirdness. Yeah, do it at school. Follow your weirdness. Do it in history class. <laughs> do it in church. <laughs> you you get the idea. Especially there. Yeah. Yeah. Especially. <laughs> you you'll you'll get noticed. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Were were you like I was the worst kid in the, the world. I was the worst kid in the world. Oh. Oh yeah. Wait, How you, about you? But you, but I mean, I was terrible. You, you, I would, I would be, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we don't have dolphins in St. Columba, Mr. Cummings. <laughs> like, well, you do, you, you do now, <laughs> you know. And 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 I would, you know, and my friend Bill Piper and I, we would do. <laughs> and everybody's just sitting there, and nobody looks around. <laughs> then eventually, everybody looks around. And then the sister knows who it was. <laughs> and uh, and I said, no, you don't understand. This is talent. They go, uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Well, well you, you're so talented. You're going to be right. I will not be a whale in class anymore. Like 50 times on the oh. grind. The- <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't think I had that kind of uh, Appreciation. Courage. Or well, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I wanted to do weird encouragement. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, but I was a, I, I, I was, um, I only gradually found um, a place for just being a weird person on a stage, mm-hmm. doing weird stuff. But I, but gradually, it's just like, man, I like, I like doing weird stuff. I like doing odd. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's, it's mm-hmm. acting, but it's also this other weird stuff of sounds and characters and, and just odd stuff. Right. I like that. I like it. It likes me. People like me doing it. I like it. I'm going to keep mm-hmm. doing that. Onomatopoeia, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awful glad to see you. I think there was a song about that. Yeah, well, and and it's, well, I've often said that the stuff that used to get me kicked out of class, I make a living with. So Yeah. So it worked, right? Yeah, I mean. You too, I Especially as a creative, obedience only gets you so far. <laughs> it, that's that's a pretty good, good line. It, it really... It does. I mean, you start out kind of wanting to learn the rules of the road and see how others do it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you want to stay on the track and learn what the track is and then, yeah. and then learn how to, to stay on the track and all that. But ultimately, when you're auditioning and, and when, you're, when you're working, your job is not to be obedient. It's not to ingratiate yourself. Mm-hmm. It's not to make people like you. Your job is to make something awesome that fits, that mm-hmm. works. That's the only job. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and, and if your mindset is just set on being obedient and pleasing people, it's like, mm-hmm. do, do you like this? Is this okay? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's like, no, yeah. you, you bring a confidence um, of good ideas mm-hmm. that is power, that's real power. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing that you should be proud of and not be ashamed of. And, and you should mm-hmm. embrace that about yourself and not be apologetic about it and just offer that and then that's your job. Mm-hmm. Well, nobody scales the giddying heights of adequacy. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? There are none. Right. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Captain Kirk was right. You have to boldly go. Yeah. You don't right? go through a session and every take it's like, yeah, that was good enough. Yeah, yeah, And then we yeah. move on. It's like, yeah. nope. Perfect, or yeah, yeah. love it, or yeah. yes, you know. Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my favorite. But not, yeah, that'll do, I guess. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's not what you're aiming for. <laughs> no, no, it is not. No, it is not. Man, oh man. So, is there anything shaking? 
that we should be uh, thinking about for the future besides well, besides everything? Halloween. Uh, my Halloween, ha- I'm, yeah. I'm going to start putting together my Halloween oh, yard. Oh, you one of those guys? I, I am. Are you? I, I have a cool. problem. I have a Halloween problem. I used to problem. be. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got my Halloween problem. I've got... Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, I'll just be giving out his address later, so don't worry. <laughs> well, I'll post it. I, I, I post it on my website, creepyyard.com. I, I, I show pictures of my of my Halloween yard on my on my Halloween website. Um, oh. But um, yeah, there's nothing other, uh, nothing else that I can think of in particular that mm. uh, is worthy of note. Well, well make something up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your Halloween costume this year? Actually, I don't. Um, I don't do a Halloween costume because the way I feel is that every day I go to other planets and I become other creatures and other beings yeah. and other characters. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that every day. So you get that out of your system. Right. I'm in service of other people's worlds. But for Halloween, I get to make my own world. So my yard for Halloween is the world that I make that's mine. So that's all I'm focused on is is my yard, not not what I'm doing to myself. <laughs> there you go. I love that. <laughs> Do you ever sit in the decorations and just make animal sounds just to scare the kids who are coming to the door? <laughs> um, uh, well, I, I I do make some sounds, but generally speaking, my version of Halloween is more creepy and less of the assault version of Halloween. There's all, there's all kinds of, there's like, you know, Winnie the Pooh mm. in a bee costume Halloween. Mm-hmm. And then there's, you know, Art the Clown from Terrifier. It's just this right. whole spectrum of whatever you want the holiday to be. And and mine mm-hmm. is just kind of creepy and odd and maybe a little bit menacing, but not something that's that's coming to attack you. Right. The axe murderer, the everything. Yeah, the, I don't go. You know, the people who have to walk around with their heads in their hands. I, I and, don't, no body parts. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't enough want. Enough already. That's, that's not that's, really Halloween. That's just, you know, saw. shock. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Saw. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Never not mind. my style. Not, not for me. Would you like to play a game? Speaking of saw. See, oh. I've actually never seen Saw because it scares me a little bit. And well, that was a, I've never seen that it. That was a, such a good transition. <laughs> no, I, got, <laughs> I, 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 I was, pre- was pregnant. Okay. Okay, okay, we'll see. Right. Let's try it. Take two. Would you like me? And then you say, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, there you go. This is the voice swap game. Here we go. So we're going to do, if you're if you're willing, if you're willing, we do this little game every every time we have a guest on where Jim will do a voice a voice line of one of his iconic characters, say Winnie the Pooh, and then we'll transfer to you, and you'll do that same line, but in one of your character's voices. Okay. And then we'll switch and do vice versa. Okay. I'll try to remember some okay. voices. Okay. Come up with one of your characters, and I'll, I'll, you know, since we're in a Star Wars groove, I'll throw out some Hondo. Sure. What do you think? Okay, great. Hondo Onaka. Okay. Here we go. Um, I remember once when he was highly inebriated... Or actually, I remember like 10 times when he was highly inebriated. Yeah. But this one time, he said, well, you know, I may not be as young as I once was, but I'm older. Well, you know, I may not be as young as I once was, but I am older. <laughs> that is a very Daffy Duck line. What does he say? Uh, that was the you qu- may be big, was, but I'm small, right? That was the yeah. quickest response we've ever that had. Was. That, that was the was fastest by good. far. <laughs> Most people sit good. there and they kind of think about it. That was so fast. Uh, yeah, that was good. That was yeah. good. You, you know what's fascinating about your Daffy voice too is the fact that yours wasn't tweaked where Mel's was. Yeah, yeah. Mine was not pitched. Uh, my Daffy was, my, that That was my voice, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I think, yeah, Mel's was a little bit, was it? Yeah, yeah, more and more so. I think the older yeah, he got, too. Probably, yeah. But Bob Bergen would know. <laughs> Bob Bergen would know. He will know. Midadi, <laughs> and he's got that midadi, midadi down to a science. Yeah, we'll 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 get him. Drag yeah, him he out do a whole workshop. Things. It's like a four week workshop on how to do midadi, midadi. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a great workshop. Yeah, yeah, and and when you get out of it, you can do it. <laughs> And uh, yeah, okay, now, yeah, that's porky. Okay, so give us one now. One of one of your uh, favorite characters, Buzz Line or uh, catchphrase. Okay, uh, and I will have I'll have Pooh do it. I'll have Pooh Winnie the Pooh answer. Okay. In my book, experience outranks everything. Well, Pooh doesn't have a book. All right, we'll we'll see <laughs> we'll see what's it. In my book, honey outranks everything. <laughs> 
good soldier. He, he would have. He would have. Yeah, he would have definitely had a little thrown a little curveball. And then there. we we have to do Taz and Taz because I think you're the first person who's voiced one oh. of the same characters oh, that could, as Jim. Oh, that's true. That's true. Oh, yeah. yeah, I did. I did Taz and Space Jam. That's right. Not since. I, I think Thank actually you. I didn't audition for it. I think Ivan Ryman just kind of threw it to me. He says, uh, "Here, you do it." Yeah, I remember something. <laughs> All right, we need to. And he only had a, blah, and and that was it. Yeah, just I a mean, couple of lines like "Lemony Fresh" or you yeah, know. yeah, <laughs> yeah "Lemony <laughs> Fresh." That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he would know. All right, now do I, I guess I have to say it? Do I have to say "Lemony Fresh"? Yeah. Or did you accidentally just do the, the uh, "Lemony <laughs> Fresh"? <laughs> Lemony fresh. <laughs> I always punctuate it with a because <laughs> you never know. Oh, awesome. Can, can we get an Olmec from saying Legends of the Hidden Temple? Because I loved that show as a kid. Sure. Legends of the Hidden Temple with your guide, Kirk Fogg. <laughs> Come on, Jim. What are you going to give us? Who, who oh. are you going to have say that? Okay. Legends of the Hidden Temple with your host, Kurt Fogg. <laughs> Did I say the right word? Yes. Oh, okay, good. I have I have a combo. I have a combo suggestion. I have another suggestion. Here we go. Bonkers uh -huh. and Klaus. Okay. Well, you know, I am the first true detective in the Hollywood Toon division. Well, you know, I am the first true detective in the Hollywood Toon division. Division. <laughs> Division. Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 I turned into you. That was terrible. <laughs> Division. No, wait, wait a second. Sorry. Anyway. Division. There we go. Division. Right. Yeah. You can fix that in post, wherever that is. Uh, I love that. All fixable I love it. in post. Oh, man. Well, very cool. Well, thanks, brother. Thank you for coming out today. Yeah, it was a, it was a real uh, pleasure uh, pontificating endlessly. <laughs> it was yes, absolutely. On the career. Well, there were the there were some some nuggets in there for our budding young friends out there. Good. Yeah. I, I hope there are. I hope yeah. there are nuggets. Right. Don't Definitely. You? Good. I hope so. It was Very a lot of cool. fun. Yeah, man. A real pleasure, Good my friend. Stuff. Thanks, buddy. Happy Halloween, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> D. Bradley Baker. Goodbye. Once again, everybody, thank you for watching another episode of Tuned In with Jim Cummings. And today we had D. Bradley Baker. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're almost at 100,000. I'm not going to bother you anymore, so do it. 82% of you watching are not subscribed, so you need to subscribe to get us there. And thank you, of course, to our patrons. If you don't know, you can find bonus content on Patreon.com. You can look for Jim Cummings Podcast over there and get a whole bunch of bonus goodies. As always, I'm producer Chris, Jim Cummings, D. Bradley Baker, Brendan Dando. We will see you in the next one. Hey! And bravo. There it is. We did it. We did it.